Lesson 7 Jesus, the Anchor of the Soul Sabbath Afternoon, February 5 The loving Jesus is ready to bless abundantly, but we need to obtain an experience in faith, in earnest prayer, and in rejoicing in the love of God. We must study the warnings and corrections he has given his people in past ages. We do not lack light. We know what works we should avoid and what requirements he has given us to observe. So if we do not seek to know and do that which is right, it is because wrongdoing suits the carnal heart better than right doing. There will always be faithless ones who wait to be carried forward by the faith of others. They have not an experimental knowledge of the truth and consequently have not felt its sanctifying power on their own souls. It should be the work of every member of the church quietly and diligently to search his own heart and see if his life and character are in harmony with God's great standard of righteousness. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, pages 532 and 533. The great adversary of God and the enemy of man is watching to find an opportunity to take us when we are off our guard. Jesus has told us of our danger and warned us against the wily foe. He has repeatedly enjoined upon us the duty of always watching and praying, lest we enter into temptation. Believe in Jesus. Trust in Jesus with living, constant faith and rely without doubt upon Jesus to keep and save you. One mighty to save has hold upon you, and as long as you will submit to be led by him, to learn of him, to confide in him, he will keep you from falling. And when God engages to keep you, he is a sure defense. The Upward Look, page 19. When we are burdened, when we are pressed with temptation, when the feelings and desires of the natural heart are contending for the victory, we should offer up fervent, importunate prayer to our Heavenly Father in the name of Christ, and this will bring Jesus to our help so that through His all-powerful and efficacious name we may gain the victory and banish Satan from our side but we should not flatter ourselves that we are safe while we make but feeble efforts in our own behalf. There is help for us only in God. We should not flatter ourselves that we have any strength and wisdom of our own, for our strength is weakness, our judgment, foolishness. Christ conquered the foe in our behalf because he pitied our weakness and knew that we would be overcome and would perish if he did not come to our help. He clothed his divinity with humanity and thus was qualified to reach man with his human arm while with his divine arm he grasped the throne of the infinite. The merits of Christ elevate and ennoble humanity and through the name and grace of Christ it is possible for man to overcome the degradation caused by the fall and through the exalted divine nature of Christ to be linked to the infinite. That I May Know Him, page 269. Sunday, February 6. Tasting the Goodness of the Word. Christ came to this world to show that by receiving power from on high, man can live an unsullied life. With unwearying patience and sympathetic helpfulness, he met men in their necessities. By the gentle touch of grace, he banished from the soul unrest and doubt, changing enmity to love and unbelief to confidence. He could say to whom he pleased, Follow me, and the one addressed arose and followed him. The spell of the world's enchantment was broken. At the sound of his voice, the spirit of greed and ambition fled from the heart, and men arose emancipated to follow the Savior. The Ministry of Healing, page 25.
The Word of God is the seed. Every seed has in itself a germinating principle. In it, the life of the plant is unfolded. So there is life in God's Word. Christ says, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. John chapter 6, verse 63. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. John chapter 5, verse 24. In every command and in every promise of the word of God is the power, the very life of God, by which the command may be fulfilled and the promise realized. He who by faith receives the word is receiving the very life and character of God. Every seed brings forth fruit after its kind. Sow the seed under right conditions and it will develop its own life in the plant. Receive into the soul by faith the incorruptible seed of the word and it will bring forth a character and a life after the similitude of the character and the life of God. Christ's Object Lessons, page 38. Our growth in grace, our joy, our usefulness, all depend upon our union with Christ. It is by communion with Him, daily, hourly, by abiding in Him, that we are to grow in grace. He is not only the author, but the finisher of our faith. It is Christ first and last and always. He is to be with us, not only at the beginning and the end of our course, but at every step of the way. A life in Christ is a life of restfulness. There may be no ecstasy of feeling, but there should be an abiding peaceful trust. Your hope is not in yourself. It is in Christ. Your weakness is united to His strength, your ignorance to His wisdom, your frailty to His enduring might. So you are not to look to yourself, not to let the mind dwell upon self, but look to Christ. Let the mind dwell upon His love, upon the beauty, the perfection of His character. Christ in His self-denial, Christ in His humiliation, Christ in His purity and holiness, Christ in His matchless love, this is the subject for the soul's contemplation. It is by loving Him, copying Him, depending wholly upon Him, that you are to be transformed into His likeness. Steps to Christ, pages 69 to 71. Monday, February 7. Impossible to Restore The proud heart strives to earn salvation, but both our title to heaven and our fitness for it are found in the righteousness of Christ. The Lord can do nothing toward the recovery of man until, convinced of his own weakness and stripped of all self-sufficiency, he yields himself to the control of God. Then he can receive the gift that God is waiting to bestow. From the soul that feels his need, nothing is withheld. He has unrestricted access to him in whom all fullness dwells. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15. The Desire of Ages, page 300. The scenes of the betrayal, rejection, and crucifixion of Christ have been reenacted and will again be reenacted on an immense scale. People will be filled with the attributes of Satan. The delusions of the arch enemy of God and man will have great power. Those who have given their affections to any leader but Christ will find themselves under the control, body, soul, and spirit of an infatuation that is so entrancing that under its power, souls turn away from hearing the truth to believe a lie. They are ensnared and taken, and by their every action they cry, Release unto us Barabbas, but crucify Christ. 
in the churches which have departed from truth and righteousness, it is being revealed what human nature will be and do when the love of God is not an abiding principle in the soul. We need not be surprised at anything that may take place now. We need not marvel at any developments of horror. Those who trample under their unholy feet the law of God have the same spirit as had the men who insulted and betrayed Jesus. Selected Messages, Book 3, pages 415 and 416. Heaven will be cheap enough if we obtain it through suffering. We must deny self all along the way, die to self daily, let Jesus alone appear, and keep his glory continually in view. I saw that those who of late have embraced the truth would have to know what it is to suffer for Christ's sake, that they would have trials to pass through that would be keen and cutting in order that they may be purified and fitted through suffering to receive the seal of the living God. As I saw what we must be in order to inherit glory, and then saw how much Jesus had suffered to obtain for us so rich an inheritance, I prayed that we might be baptized into Christ's sufferings, that we might not shrink at trials. Said the angel, Deny self. Ye must step fast. Some of us have had time to get the truth and to advance step by step, and every step we have taken has given us strength to take the next. But now time is almost finished, and what we have been years learning they will have to learn in a few months. Early Writings, page 67. Tuesday, February 8. No sacrifice for sins left. Some souls who claim to be believers have slighted and turned from the Word of God. They have neglected the Bible, the wonderful guidebook, the true tester of all ideas, and claim that they have the Spirit to teach them that this renders searching the Scriptures unnecessary. All such are heeding the sophistry of Satan. The Lord loves you, and His guardian angels are round about you. If you are doers of the Word, you will obey the instructions of Jesus Christ. In our own strength, we are perfect weakness. But when we put our whole trust in Jesus Christ, we are kept by His power, for He is fully able to keep every soul that puts His trust in Him. The peril to which every soul is exposed is very great. The Upward Look, page 19. Many today stand where Peter stood, when in self-confidence he declared that he would not deny his Lord. And because of their self-sufficiency, they fall an easy prey to Satan's devices. Those who realize their weakness trust in a power higher than self. And while they look to God, Satan has no power against them. But those who trust in self are easily defeated. Let us remember that if we do not heed the cautions that God gives us, a fall is before us. Christ will not save from wounds the one who places himself unbidden on the enemy's ground. He lets the self-sufficient one, who acts as if he knew more than his Lord, go on in his supposed strength. Then comes suffering and a crippled life, or perhaps defeat and death. In the warfare, the enemy takes advantage of the weakest points in the defense of those he is attacking. Here he makes his fiercest assaults. The Christian should have no weak points in his defense. He should be barricaded by the support that the scriptures give to the one who is doing God's will. The tempted soul will bear away the victory if he follows the example of him who met the tempter with the word, It is written. He can stand securely in the protection of a thus saith the Lord. This day with God. Page 259. Sanctification is a daily work. Let none deceive themselves with the belief that God will pardon and bless them while they are trampling upon one of his requirements. The willful commission of a known sin silences the witnessing voice of the Spirit and separates the soul from God. 
Whatever may be the ecstasies of religious feeling, Jesus cannot abide in the heart that disregards the divine law. God will honor those only who honor him. No man can serve two masters. If we serve sin, we cannot serve Christ. The Christian will feel the promptings of sin, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit. But the spirit striveth against the flesh, keeping up a constant warfare. Here is where Christ's help is needed. Human weakness becomes united to divine strength, and faith exclaims, Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Messages to Young People, page 114. Wednesday, February 9. Better Things In his letter to the Corinthians, Paul endeavored to show them Christ's power to keep them from evil. He knew that if they would comply with the conditions laid down, they would be strong in the strength of the Mighty One. As a means of helping them to break away from the thraldom of sin and to perfect holiness in the fear of the Lord, Paul urged upon them the claims of him to whom they had dedicated their lives at the time of their conversion. Ye are Christ's, he declared. Ye are not your own. Ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. The Acts of the Apostles, page 306. Every moment is freighted with eternal consequences. We are to stand as minutemen, ready for service at a moment's notice. The opportunity that is now ours to speak to some needy soul, the word of life, may never offer again. God may say to that one, This night thy soul shall be required of thee. And through our neglect he may not be ready. Luke chapter 12, verse 20. In the great judgment day, how shall we render our account to God? Life is too solemn to be absorbed in temporal and earthly matters, in a treadmill of care and anxiety for the things that are but an atom in comparison with the things of eternal interest. Yet God has called us to serve Him in the temporal affairs of life. Diligence in this work is as much a part of true religion as is devotion. The Bible gives no endorsement to idleness, it is the greatest curse that afflicts our world. Every man and woman who is truly converted will be a diligent worker. Christ's Object Lessons, page 343. Cultivate a disposition to esteem others better than yourself. Be less self-sufficient, less confident. Cherish patience, forbearance, and brotherly love. Be ready to help the erring and have pity and tender sympathy toward those who are weak. You need not leave your business in order to glorify the Lord, but you may, from day to day, in every deed and word, while pursuing your usual avocations, honor him whom you serve, thereby influencing for the right those with whom you are brought in contact. Be courteous, tender-hearted, forgiving toward others. Let self sink in the love of Jesus that you may honor your Redeemer and do the work that He has appointed for you to do. How little you know of the heart trials of poor souls who have been bound in the chains of darkness and who lack resolution and moral power. Strive to understand the weakness of others, help the needy, crucify self, and let Jesus take possession of your soul in order that you may carry out the principles of truth in your daily life. Then will you be, as never before, a blessing to the Church and to all those with whom you come in contact. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, pages 133 and 134. Thursday, February 10 Jesus, the Anchor of the Soul on Mount Moriah, God again renewed his covenant confirming with a solemn oath the blessing to Abraham and to his seed through all coming generations. By myself have I sworn, saith Jehovah, 
For because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Abraham's great act of faith stands like a pillar of light, illuminating the pathway of God's servants in all succeeding ages. Abraham did not seek to excuse himself from doing the will of God. During that three days' journey, he had sufficient time to reason and to doubt God if he was disposed to doubt. He might have reasoned that the slaying of his son would cause him to be looked upon as a murderer, a second Cain, that it would cause his teaching to be rejected and despised, and thus destroy his power to do good to his fellow men. He might have pleaded that age should excuse him from obedience. But the patriarch did not take refuge in any of these excuses. Abraham was human. His passions and attachments were like ours. But he did not stop to question how the promise could be fulfilled if Isaac should be slain. He did not stay to reason with his aching heart. He knew that God is just and righteous in all his requirements, and he obeyed the command to the very letter. Patriarchs and Prophets Page 153. To the omnipotence of the King of Kings, our covenant keeping God unites the gentleness and care of a tender shepherd. Nothing can stand in his way. His power is absolute, and it is the pledge of the sure fulfillment of his promises to his people. He can remove all obstructions to the advancement of his work. He has means for the removal of every difficulty that those who serve him and respect the means he employs may be delivered. His goodness and love are infinite, and his covenant is unalterable. The plans of the enemies of his work may seem to be firm and well established, but he can overthrow the strongest of these plans, and in his own time and way he will do this, when he sees that our faith has been sufficiently tested and that we are drawing near to him and making him our counselor. In the darkest days when appearances seem so forbidding, fear not, have faith in God. He is working out his will, doing all things well in behalf of his people. The strength of those who love and serve him will be renewed day by day. His understanding will be placed at their service that they may not err in the carrying out of his purposes. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 8, Pages 10 and 11. For further reading, The Desire of Ages, Judas, Pages 716 to 722, and That I May Know Him, Life Not to Be Trifled With, Page 93.